And there you can see the effect of the wind today. And Iowa State has elected to receive. The kicker, of course, uh, getting set to tee up the ball. He may need a holder out there, George Turner. Dale Klein, right. Yeah, it could be. It's blowing with him. And I'm sure Cyclones right now have a good possibility of getting the ball on the 30 if he just gets it a little bit airborne, blow it out of the end zone. Well, the two deep backs for Iowa State right there, as you see, Tony Tucker on the left side, and it's Michael Posey, the deep receiver. And, of course, he is a pretty doggone good uh, kickoff returner. He's averaging 20.4 uh, 20 20 yards. 24 yards, longest of 32. Returned 16 of them thus far this season. And the wind has to be a factor in this ball game, and I would imagine that it probably will affect Iowa State more than Nebraska, simply because Iowa State likes to pass so frequently. So all the teams warming up, and that ball just drips in the wind. Here's Klein's kickoff, and this ball game underway. The sixth largest crowd in Iowa State history on hand, and this one does not sail out of the end zone. It bounces in the end zone, so Iowa State will have it first and ten at their own 20-yard line. Now, the offensive line for Iowa State, Westermeyer, Hundorf, Monsley, Jasper, Eggleston, and Smolt. Alan Hood will be the quarterback. Richard Hansen and Tommy Davis starting at the running backs. Robbie Miner and Trill later on. First play from scrimmage, I formation for Iowa State. Nebraska, an excellent team against the run. Handoff goes to Richard Hansen. Skirts his way up across the 20. A difficult two yards at the very, very most. Mark Dawn, the strong linebacker, makes the stop. And defensively, it's Weber, Spockman, Graber, Stuckey, and Strasburger up front. Stuckey is a good one. Mark Dom and Mark Mumford are the linebackers. The deep backs, Dave Burke, Neil Harris, Mike McCashlin, and Brett Clark. Nebraska allowing less than 86 yards per ball game against the run. Gain of two, second down and eight. The ball on the Iowa State 22-yard line. And off again to Hanson. Drives the middle of that big Husker line, gets up close to the 25, stopped just short of it. Ken Graber, the nose guard, makes the stop. Cyclones just trying to feel their way, trying to find a soft spot possibly in the Nebraska line. And not many teams have found that particular place because it's a very, very good line, a big line, and a veteran line. But they've, uh, they've shut off the run quite well this year. Well, a passing situation now, and as you saw, Iowa State ranked 16th in the nation in passing offense. It's third and six on the Iowa State 24-yard line, and this time straight back. Hood going for the sideline, has Hanson across the 30, and he should have the first down. Good throw to Hanson coming out of the backfield. Alan Hood in his first start since the Iowa game gets good protection. Hey, that Iowa State offensive line has really progressed. Hood with nobody even close to him. There's Hanson completely wide open. Catches it, turns upfield, and gets out of bounds just across the 30 between the 31 and 2. So Iowa State manages to roll to a first down in their first offensive performance or possession, actually, of the ball game. And it's now spotted on the 32-yard line. Split setbacks this time. And a little counter play to Hanson. Finds a nice hole and gets a gain of about five across the 35. Dropped at the 36-yard line by defensive end Bill Weber. Fine running by Hanson. Notice the Kansas or the Nebraska defense is stacked against, well, you don't see if they're stacked against the offensive right side of the Cyclone line. Notice number 52, Graber gets completely turned around on the block. Hanson picks the hole and picks up a good solid five. Hanson, just a small back. Checks in at 5'9", 170, and that might be soaking wet. High formation for Iowa State. Gain of five, second and five on the 37. And the corner showing blitz. It's time to give the Hanson again. He slants off left tackle, gets across the 35 to about the 37. Rob Stuckey and Mark Dom stand up and make the stop. So maybe a gain of one at the very, very most. Richard Hanson came into the ball game carrying 105 times this season. He's rushed for 60 or more yards in the past five games, including 60 last week against Missouri. Say 60 last week on that field down in Missouri was pretty good output. Jim Kreiner looking on. He was really fired up in the pregame commentary. He thinks Iowa State will definitely play Nebraska tough. Third down and five. Another passing situation. Screen out to the left side of Davis, and it's read beautifully by Nebraska. All over him is Bill Weber, the defensive end. So Iowa State contained on this drive, and they'll have to punt, and they will have to punt into a very stiff win. Jim Thompson will be doing the punting, and Jeff Smith, the Big Eight's leading rusher, will be the deep back. 
short guy is Shane Swanson, who returned one a week or two and for a touchdown. Good snap from center. Thompson, sort of a squib punt. It's going to take an Iowa State roll, and nobody will touch that one, but it will fall dead at about the 40-yard line of Nebraska. So they're going to start out with excellent field position. 11.45 to go in the first quarter. Nebraska on offense. When we return after Shingo, Shane Swanson. The handoff, Jeff Smith. Finds a nice five-yard hole off left tackle and gets up to about the 45-yard line. And Jim Lubbers brings him down. Take a look now at the Iowa State's, well, first of all, Nebraska's offensive line. Benning Griminger, Trainowitz, he's a good one. Orton, Morrow, and Heimer up front. Mark Benning, well, that is incorrect. The quarterback is going to be Travis Turner. Harry Griminger is, we've got some mistakes there. We'll give them to you. Tom Rathman is the fullback. Jeff Smith is the tailback. And in motion goes Shane Swanson. And the handoff to the fullback right up the middle, close to first down yardage. Defensively for Iowa State, Lester Williams, Steve Little, Barry Moore, and Jim Lubbers, they are all Red Helmet recipients. And in the linebacking core, Dennis Gibson, Jeff Braswell, and Iverson is not getting the starting nod, but rather Randy Richards started in the ball game today. Deep backs, Anthony Davis, Mark uh, Anthony Mays, Terrence Anthony, and Kevin Williams. Here comes Jeff Smith diving for the first down across midfield down to about the Iowa State's 48-yard line. Jeff Braswell makes the stop for the Cyclones. Jeff Smith, not a big fella. He's 5'9", 195 pounder, but uh, has paid his dues playing behind Rogier and a fine, fine running back. And of course, Nebraska going for their 26th straight Big 8 victory today. Wing right formation. Swanson in the wing. In motion to the left side. Here's the pitch back to Jeff Smith. And he is really met head on by Braswell at about the line of scrimmage. Looked to be a little bit of a hole there, but Braswell and about four others closed it rather quickly. Smith takes the pitch. Notice the quarterback Turner going back to look for someone to block. And he's not getting to anybody, but Smith nailed right there by Braswell. Good hit. Well, no gain on the play. It's second down and 10 now. The ball at the Iowa State 48 and a half yard line. Jeff Braswell, only a sophomore, formerly the Sports Illustrated Defensive Player of the Week in the nation after the Oklahoma game. Had something like 19 tackles in that game. Play action fake. Travis Turner tucks it away and then finds a hole across the 45 down to about the 43. Jim Lubbers finally catches up with him, but it will be a nice gain of about seven. Looked like play all the way with Swanson out to the right-hand side. Looked like Turner wanted to go that way, but turned back inside against the grain, picked up pretty good yardage, brought down from behind by Lubert. Of course, Nebraska has won six straight against Iowa State, going for number seven, the last Iowa State win, coming in 1977. In that ball game, Iowa State was a 24-21 victor. Swanson in motion, Nebraska out of the eye. Here's the fake to the fullback, and I believe Travis Turner falls down with the ball. Steve Little got in there and grabbed him by the ankle. And it's going to be a fourth and five as they lose a couple on the play. I think uh, Little had a lot to do with it, and I think Griminger, the pulling guard, had a little bit to do with it. I think there was a, a little bit of a mix-up there. Turner ends up on the ground. Nebraska will kick it away. Well, Scott Livingston counting heads out there right now, and he is a good putter. He's averaging 42.7 yards per punt, his longest a 64-yarder. And back deep to receive for Iowa State will be Billy McHugh. McHugh averaging 8.7 yards per punt return. A little pressure put on Livingston, and this one will bounce behind McHugh and sail into the end zone, so Iowa State will take over at its own 20-yard line. So defensively, Iowa State ranked 19th in the nation. Holds Nebraska to but one first down on their first offensive possession. And thus far, this ball game is about as even as you can get, George. Look, start out Nebraska. It looked like they'd uh, assault the Cyclone right defensive side. Did a pretty good job with it. Cyclone win. The last one was a 24-21 verdict in Lincoln in 1977. Dexter Green had a lot to do with that. In 76, the year before, they beat uh, Nebraska right here at uh, Cyclone Stadium, Jack Trice Field. And, uh, outstanding two wins in a row over the Huskers and had some disappointed Nebraska fans. Threw a few interceptions, and then it was Espinosa all the way. I formation for the Cyclones. Davis and Hanson in there at the running backs. And the handoff goes to Richard Hanson. 
He tries the right side, gets nowhere, maybe even a loss of one. Mark Dom just meets him about the line of scrimmage. Nebraska really stacked up against the right offensive side of the Cyclone line. Evidently, they have seen that the Cyclones run frequently to that side, and they are really heavy to the right side of the center, their own defensive left side. Jim Kreiner looking on, of course, 65, 33, and 2. If there's inexperience anywhere, it's on Iowa State's right side or Nebraska's left. They have a sophomore defensive tackle in Chris Spockman. Otherwise, everybody's all senior status. Hood dropping back, now being chased out of the pocket. Watch out. And he'll lead it inside the five. And it's Danny Noonan, along with Rob Stuckey, who comes in there and drops Hood way back inside his own five. Hood looking to get out of the pocket, but you see number 87. Now Hood will go to the left side, but 87 recovers quickly, has no place to go. Looked like he wanted to throw it, but wisely took it into the belly and ooh, kept it. Had a face guard on there that the officials didn't see. Stuckey had him right by the face mask as he took him down to the turf. But now Iowa State with its back against the wall. They would have to pot in a stiff wind if they can't come up with a first down here. It's third and 27 on the Iowa State four. In motion goes Hanson. Single setback now is Davis. He gets the call. Trying for some room. Gets it out to about the 10-yard line. And Iowa State's putting unit coming on with a difficult task lying ahead of it. Chad Daffer made the tackle that time on Tommy Davis. Nebraska plays a lot of players. They played something like 90-some players last week in a big win against Kansas State. And it's nothing for them to go into their three deep. Jim Thompson in his own end zone, averaging 37.4 yards a punt. And Jeff Smith, the deep back now, along with Shane Swanson to receive that punt. Thompson, this time, gets a boomer. The wind holds it up. Smith. I believe motion for a fair catch at about the Iowa State 41. So Nebraska takes over once again. Six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. And there's no score here at Cyclone Stadium. Stop. So it will be second down and six. See all those red helmets in that Cyclone defensive unit all the way across the front line. Eight of 11. Well deserved. Playing very admirably on defense in the last several ball games. This time, Rathman, the fullback, charges up across the 35 down to about the 34. He'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Dennis Gibson, the weak outside linebacker, makes the tackle that time. And it should bring up third down and three. Ranked third in the nation in rushing offense. Nebraska averaging 319 yards per ball game on the rush, only about 112 by the pass. And total offense now averaging 431 yards per ball game and a big play right here. Let's see what Nebraska does with it. Third and three. Iowa State almost offside. The handoff to Jeff Smith, and I don't know if he's going to get it. Nope. Jeff Braswell meets him and drives him back along with some other Cyclones over there. And Smith knew on that occasion he was really hit. Steve Little getting up from the bottom of the pile also helping out. Along with Lester Williams, but Braswell is the man that hit him head on. Second opportunity for Nebraska in a third down situation. The second time they didn't get it. Well, it's fourth and two, and I don't see a punter on the field. Nebraska's going to go for it. Travis Turner, the junior quarterback. Nebraska out of the eye, and they'll use a double tight end set. This time the pitch to Smith, left side of the line, and he should have the first down. Jim Lubbers finally drags him to the turf, but not before he gets close to the 30-yard line. And Nebraska will sustain their drive. Picked up, got airborne. A lot of Nebraska fans on hand for this ball game, and as we mentioned earlier, it is the sixth largest crowd in Iowa State history. Officially today, 52,919. Capacity here is only 50,000. Stands are full, and all four of the corners where the grass slopes are are pretty well filled up. First and 10 for Nebraska on the ISU 31. This time Smith, he's going to try the left side again and has a big hole before Anthony Mays chases him out of bounds just about the 11 yard line. Notice all the pulling linemen. The entire right side of the line is out ahead of Jeff Smith. Typical power sweep. Smith 12th in the nation in rushing. A good run and Anthony Mays will catch up with him right here, push him out of bounds at the 11. 
There you see Anthony Mays, one of those red helmet recipients. Seven for 35 thus far in the ball game for Jeff Smith. He's averaging over 100 yards per ball game. Rathman, the fullback, tripped up about the line of scrimmage, but his forward progress down inside the 10, give him a gain of about two or three. Barry Moore makes the hit at the line. Two defensive tackles in there quite quickly on that play. Both Moore and Little were in the Nebraska backfield. They did pick up a couple. Rathman has carried 62 times coming into the ball game for 317 yards and four TDs. And Nebraska ranked first in the Big Eight in rushing offense. Mentioning Jeff Smith once again, he's really doing a number today. This time, play action fake. Travis Turner is going to turn the corner, keep it himself, and he's driven out of bounds inside the five. Nebraska has to go all the way down to the one to pick up the first down. That's Scott Kimball in the end zone, but uh, Turner couldn't find anybody to throw to. Pretty much a naked, naked rollout. Now looks in the end zone. Now it's run right here all the way. And he's hammered out of bounds by Dennis Gibson. Turner running for 1.9 yards per carry this season. He has positive rushing, which is a good indication of any quarterback. First quarterbacks end up in the negative column in rushing because of the scramble and the sacks. Gibson and Richards in on the, uh, well, let's see, Gibson coming out. Richards going in for him. And Jim Kreiner looking on concerned right here. Field position is so critical when you play Nebraska. Of course, Iowa State going into that stiff wind here in the first half hasn't helped matters any. Here's Smith. And he has stood up after a gain of maybe one at the very, very most. He is met at the line of scrimmage by a host of Iowa State jerseys. And now we're going to have an official timeout while they spot the ball. Davis and Richards in on the tackle. Boy, good, solid hit. Excellent defensive play. Davis in at the bottom of the pile. Vernon Singleton also got in on the action. Well, it's fourth down and two, so now Nebraska will try a field goal. And on to do the effort is Dale Klein. And this will officially be a 20-yard effort from the near side hash mark. The wind is with him. Should be just a chip shot for Klein. It's up. And it is good. Klein now is four out of six on the season. He has not had to resort to field goal attempts very frequently, not with that potent Nebraska offense, but the Huskers put the first three on the board by means of a 20-yard field goal. Klein, three of five coming into the ball. This one's sailing down towards Michael Posey, and he's going to take it short of the goal line at about his own two or three-yard line. Gets out to the 15 across the 20. He's got some running room, dragged down from behind at the 32. Oh, fine run. Little. And he was finally caught up with by Brett Clark. Little burst of speed. There's Posey. He'll notice he'll kind of lope along here, not full speed. Cut a little bit to the left and right there. Just a little bit of a surge, and he went by two Nebraska players. Look for a moment like him. He might be off to the races. Number 33 was a defensive man back, but a good run back by Posey. Good field position for the Cyclone. Posey only had one more man to beat if he got past Clark there. Iowa State starts out at their own 32-yard line. In motion goes Hanson to the near side. Here's a quick pass out to Robbie Miner. That will be good for about three or four yards across the 35. Dave Burke on the coverage. Quick shot. Here's Robbie Miner out on the side. Had number 33 beaten soundly. Turned it out of bounds, but uh, about a four-yard pickup. Dave Burke, the defensive back. Robbie Miner this year, 11 catches, 136 yards, make it 12 now. I formation for Iowa State, second down and six on their own 36-yard line. This time, handoff to Hanson, met at the line of scrimmage. Little or no gain as Danny Noonan teams up with Mark Dom to make the stop. Last year, Nebraska was very suspect against the pass. This year, they are probably one of the finest overall defensive teams anywhere. What they do, they're so very, very strong against the run, they force you to pass, which is kind of playing into their hands. Cyclones uh, this year, well, now today, kind of working against them, what with the wind, but Cyclones should do well against them. Watch this one now. Henderson's got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near side. Let's see if Hood picks it up. Yep, he's going to Henderson. Look at that ball. It's sort of just blew back in the wind and 
I don't know if he got any forward progress or not there because it was just a little flat pass. Mark Mumford was in on Henderson very, very quickly. A putting situation coming up. Tracy just went out and stopped right dead, and it was a long pass cross field. He's trying to make a move here, but defensive back is there much too quickly. Watkins. Well, the linebacker sure got there in a hurry, too, because when they lined up, it was just one on one. Thompson in to do the putting now. A little better field position this time around. A little high snap. No problem for Thompson, but the kick is going to be a squibbler that's going to be going out of bounds. It's a shank, and it's going to roll out of bounds inside the Iowa State territory down about the 45-yard line. So Thompson certainly got off a poor one that time. And Nebraska again will have good field possession. Oh, we've got timeout called by one of the teams down on the field, I believe. Football right now in Cyclone territory at the 46 yard line. It wasn't as bad a field position as the last time, but a, a kick that uh, Thompson hit it a little bit high and it got up in the wind. This didn't have a chance. Actually, about 10 yards is all that he got on it, which hurts the average considerably and hurts the field position considerably. Things should change here shortly. A minute 20 remaining in the first quarter. Cyclones like to keep the clock running, hold Nebraska, and have them kicking into the wind. Well, I think there was a radio timeout, wasn't it? They've got radio timeouts this year along the Big 8 networks. Nebraska ranked second in the Big 8 in scoring offense. One minute, 20 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Three-nothing Huskers at this point. In motion goes Swanson to the near side. Here's the handoff to Rathman, the fullback, and he's got plenty of running room down across the 40. And he'll be close to first down yardage, not quite. Anthony Mays makes the stop. And let's take a look from the end zone and see the big hole that the line makes here. See that sizable hole right there? Good job. Mays, I'll tell you, Mays didn't back away from him. Nailed him head on. Made a good stop, and it'll bring up second and a long two. Nebraska has one of the most intricate offenses you'll see in college football. Also, a lot of deception. Second down and two on a 38. Here's a naked reverse by Travis Turner. And he's got running room before Gibson catches up with him, but not before Nebraska managers the first and ten. Down inside the 30 at about the 27-yard line. Gain of 12. Rolling out. Turner with lots of running room. Gibson right there. Turner turned inside. Looked like he might have a block downfield from an end, but uh, no go. Well, Travis Turner, 48 carries, 91 yards in 1984. And a couple of good ones, big ones today. Down under 25 seconds left to go in the first quarter, so this may be the last play of the first. Play action fake. Turner firing up field, incomplete. It was intended for Todd Frame, the tight end. That'll stop the clock with 13 seconds left and bring up a second down and 10. Good pressure in the backfield by Willie Everett. Looked like Turner might have wanted to run again, but Everett was there, prevented him, made him throw the football. A little bit of a hurry, threw it a little bit low. Willie Everett limping a little bit as he goes back to the defensive huddle. Nebraska leading in first downs, 4-1. to one. And I thought that might have been the last play of the first half, but of course the incomplete pass stops the clock. Second down and 10. Slot left formation. And here's the delay handoff to Jeff Smith. And oh, he's going to gallop. That's not Smith. DuBose. That's Doug DuBose, the sophomore who has been performing so admirably for Nebraska. DuBose stats are a little more impressive, really, than, uh, than Smith's. You look at that 114 carries, has 720 yards, averaging 6.3. That's a half a yard more than Jeff Smith. DeBose, a 5'11", 185-pound sophomore out of Uncasville, Connecticut. Well, that was the last play of the first quarter. And now we will change directions, and Nebraska will be forced to go into the wind. At the end of one here at Cyclone Stadium, the Huskers on top of the Cyclones. Three in there at tailback once again. They've got a double tight end set. And here's Turner with the option. Iowa State stringing it out and played very beautifully by the Iowa State defensive lineup. Lester Williams made the stop for Iowa State. Turner picks up maybe a one or two yards there inside the 15 down to about the 13 yard line. Good job by Lester Williams. He was chasing the play from the backside. 
DeBose was out as a trail back, but uh, Turner never had the opportunity to put the football back to him. It would have lost yardage had he done it. But good play by Lester Williams. Iowa State held to minus one yard in rushing in the first quarter. Nebraska 85 yards on the ground. DeBose gets the handoff. Beats a couple of tacklers and then finally just barely dragged down by Anthony Davis. He had some daylight, but he still manages to skirt down to the six yard line. Good saving tackle made by Davis. That'll be close to a first down. I think it's going to be just about a half yard short. We'll call it third and a short one coming up. Passing in the first half, Iowa State. Four for four, but only seven yards. The rushing comparison is right here. Look at this. Ooh. Lopsided. Here's the pitch back to DeBose. Trying to turn the corner, and brute strength puts him inside the five. He's nailed out of bounds down there by number 35, Terrence Anthony. But it will be first and goal now for the Huskers. Good solid run by DeBose. Well, he just turned on the power right at the end and powered a couple of backs two or three yards. DeBose only a sophomore, 185 pounds, 5'11". Not a bad pass receiver either. Averaging 8.8 .8 yards a catch. Nebraska out of the eye. DeBose trying to go airborne, and he's going to be stopped short of the goal line. Buster Williams, I think, was the first to hit him. Good shot from the end zone. Cyclones, there's the ball to DeBose, tries to go airborne and uh, runs well. Hey, DeBose doesn't get that height in these jumps like some of the Oklahoma backs do. Well, it's second and goal now, and the ball is spotted down inside the one. Here's the sneak by Travis Turner. Did he get in? No official indication yet. One official on the side says no, it's still a half yard short. And the official is calling timeout now for him to unpilot and spot the ball. I'll tell you, Braswell, there's another look at it. Travis Turner going to try and go right over the top. Tries to get a little airborne, and there's about eight Cyclone red jerseys right there to stop him, and it's about half the length of the football from the goal line. Well, it's third down and goal now. They've got two opportunities to knock it in there. He picked up about four inches that last time. Watch for Rathman, the fullback, this time to get the call, probably. Nope, Turner again trying to sneak it in. This time he makes a touchdown, Nebraska. Watch the quarterback right over the top, right behind the big center, Trenowitz. Into the end zone, Travis Turner with a one-yard touchdown run, and Klein will attempt the extra point. When you got Trainowitz blocking for you, you've got quite a hole up front because he's all big eight. Mark Trainowitz. Good defensive effort by the Cyclones. Get down that close to the end zone and hold them like they did. That's good work. Good, solid play. Dale Klein on now with a conversion. Perfect snap. Kick is up, and it is dead center, so Nebraska manages a field goal and a touchdown and now the Huskers lead the Cyclones 10 nothing with 12 28 left to play in the first half. Iowa State with two deep receivers and let's see where Livingston goes with it this time the wind is really holding it up Tony Tucker takes it at his own 15 finds a nice hole cuts up field across the 30 to the 35 and finally Brett Clark catches up with it. Fine move fine move up field. Keep in mind that Tucker started out the season as a cornerback. Good move. He catches it on the run. Posey was right there, and Tucker looks for a hole, sees it right there, turns up field, and is finally dropped by number 10. That's Brett Clark. 6'3, 200 pound safety. Scoring drive, 10 plays, 46 yards. Three minutes. Can't be 62 seconds. More like 52 seconds, I believe. And in motion this time goes Jeff Wadka. This time the handoff goes to Richard Hansen, gets maybe a yard up to about the 35 before Chris Spockman, the defensive tackle, drives him backwards. And Iowa State still trying to run the football so that they can keep Nebraska a little off guard and make the passing game work. But boy, Nebraska is tough to run against, averaging only 86 yards for their opponents in rushing per game. They've scouted Iowa State pretty well. They've just loaded up against the tendencies, and the Cyclones have run basically off the right side. 
Plus, they're working against two small running backs. Well, now Iowa State with the second down and nine. And this time, the rollout by Hood. Going up field has Tommy Davis and the first down. Well, they say he's going to be out of bounds just about at the first down marker, and it should be a first down as Greg Reeves chases him out of the sideline. Alan Hood and uh, Allen, a fine runner. They're going to have to respect that. Turns out Davis is open. Now watch the burst as Davis catches the football. He'll turn the drop the left shoulder and turn up field and pick up the first down or should be very, very close. Well, it is going to be an Iowa State first down. The official indication comes from the sideline referee now, and they'll move the ball up to about the 45-44 yard line. Second of the game for the Cyclones, Nebraska with five. Nebraska has converted one out of four third down situations. The Cyclones have yet to. Oh, if that was a third down, they did there. That was second down. Second down. All right, in motion this time comes Hanson to the near side, and Iowa State will roll out left. Upfield, they've got Henderson complete at the 45 of the Huskers. And that's Tracy Henderson's first catch of the day. Great concentration by Henderson. Good throw by Hood, and Henderson is in heavy traffic. Goes up right there, snared the football, is nailed immediately by the defensive back, Dave Burke, but another first down for the Cyclones. And actually, we made a mistake. That is the second catch by Henderson of the day. He had one earlier for no gain. And obviously, being an All-American and leading the Big Eight in pass receiving, the red helmet is certainly in order. Roll out to the right side. Hood better hurry. He's being chased, and he may be caught from behind and is. Dropped for no gain as he crosses the 45 of the Huskers. Bill Weber caught up with him from behind. And I don't know if Jim Craner wants Alan Hood running a great deal because, first of all, you get a freshman as the only backup for Hood. Yeah, I'll tell you, Alan has to run. I, I, that's my feeling about him is that he has to run because he has that ability. Makes a pretty good move here, and then he has to hesitate a moment. Weber's going to catch him from behind. And that's the same way that Alex Espinosa got hurt last week against Missouri. Caught from behind, and a broken leg ended his season. 10-0 Huskies, 10 and a half minutes to go in the first half, and Iowa State with a second down and 10. Here's the handoff to Hanson. Nice hole, gets up across the 40, down into Nebraska's 37-yard line, I believe. Dave Burke makes the hit on him. Good interior blocking by the Cyclone offensive line, and Hanson makes a fine move here, cutting back against the grain. Makes a good second effort, brings up a third down and about two. We'll see how Iowa State goes on conversions now. Hanson, of course, 60 or more yards, last five games. And for a little man, he's been showing you about as much heart as you could ask from anyone. Third and three, split setbacks in the backfield. Hood straight back to pass. They need this one. And it's overthrown and tender for Hanson. Incomplete. And let's see, back road comes on now to the field, and he's going to try a monstrous field goal, and maybe with the help of that wind, he may have a shot at this. I think they're going to spot the ball down at about the 44-yard line, so it will be a 54-yard attempt. The distance is really no problem. It's gauging the wind and getting a good solid hit on it because he's downwind very, very hard. Back road's longest of the year, a 48-yarder. And here comes a 54-yard attempt. The wind is helping, and it's going to be no good. We had enough, enough distance just a hair off to the right. Just missed it to the right. So Nebraska starts out in good field position when they return. 9.42 to go in the half. But Iowa State is going to have to get some offense going against one of the toughest defensive teams in the conference. This time, Rathman, the fullback, bucks his way up to about the 40-yard line. He's brought down by Lester Williams and Steve Little, and it will be a gain of about three. Rathman, not one of those great speed guys. Scott Porter, matter of fact, 222-pound senior out of Nebraska City. But uh, Nebraska, not with great speed at the fullback position, but the offensive line does such a fine job that the backs can pick up two or three yards without really doing too much work. All right, we also have Craig Sunberg in there at quarterback now in place of Travis Turner. So Nebraska is certainly feeling confident to substitute their first and second team at will. This is Jeff Smith, and he does cross the 45-yard line before Lester Williams brings him down. He'll be stopped about a yard and a half, two yards shy of the first down. Lester Williams and Anthony Davis right after the pitch. Davis sees the hole, turns upfield, turns inside Lester Williams. 
It's just part of him. Anthony Davis also there, but a good pickup. It'll bring up third down and one. Scott Porter, the number two fullback in there now, and Craig Sunberg, the number two quarterback in there now, along with Jeff Smith at running back. And the pitch goes to Smith. He's going to try the left end, and he has got the first down out to midfield. Lester Williams and Anthony Mays in on the tackle. Hey, Nebraska in the past has had sizable ends, tight ends. This year, their starting tight end is only a 215-pounder. You think back some of the people that they've had, and it's uh, kind of surprising. They're not quite as big as they have been. A lot of people wonder what happened in those earlier ball games when Nebraska played such people as Colorado so very, very close. Well, they had a lot of turnovers. Here's Smith again. And he gets a tough one right up the middle. He's met head on by Bill Bertheson for the Cyclones. Nebraska this year has been putting the ball on the turf more than ever before. Tom Osborne, second winningest active coach in NCAA football. And of course, number one is the man down there that wears the maroon and white of Oklahoma, Barry Switzer. Second down and nine. Swanson goes in motion to the near side. Here's the option. Sunberg pitches it out to Smith, and there he loses the handle. But he covers the ball, and Terrence Anthony then drops on him. So it will be a loss of at least one on the play. Sunberg was really nailed, got rid of it a little bit late. You watch the down-the-line option right here, out in front of him, defensive player. Right there, he makes the pitch and is hit almost immediately by Lester Williams, but an errant pitch. Smith couldn't hang on to it. And Cyclone recover it, bring up third down and about 11. Nice tackle there by one of the Nebraska offensive linemen on Gibson. He was literally hammered. Sunberg on the rollout. Wants to throw. Across the middle. Has his man. It's complete for a first down inside the 40. And Kevin Williams down there on the coverage. And let's see who the receiver is. Number 86. And that's got to be Jason Gamble, who is a freshman split end. Good move. He went down just far enough to pick up the first down. And good protection for Nebraska. You notice nobody even close to him. Fires downfield, and right there, the receiver is wide open. Jason Gamble. Good move. Came into the ball game with six receptions for 124 yards and two touchdowns. Now a slot right formation. The handoff goes to the tailback Smith. And he crosses the 35 down to the 34 before Lester Williams wraps him up along with Anthony Mays. And that'll be a gain of about four or five on the play. I get four, second down and six. As we've occasionally said the name uh, our middle linebacker just a little bit, Jeff Braswell. And I think <laughs> probably that today that Nebraska has done everything they can to neutralize his effects on the offense of Nebraska. Sunberg is senior at quarterback. He started the first two or three games for Nebraska. This time a little reverse. Shane Swanson coming out this way. Lester Williams chasing him, and Williams wraps him up for a gain of about one. Good play by Lester Williams as he chases him out of bounds at about the 32. One of those little cute plays, and I think that Nebraska saw that the Cyclones against Missouri and Oklahoma were susceptible to the reverse. But here's Swanson. He's a little fella, about five foot eight, maybe 200 pounds, and uh, ran too long in one spot. Lester Williams ran him down, pushed him out, just picked up about a yard. It's third and a long, well, put third and five. Slot formation to the left side. Sunberg, play action fake and on the rollout. And it's batted down at the line of scrimmage by Jim Lubbers. That's well, a good thing, too, because I'll tell you, Sunberg was going to get nailed from behind. Watch Braswell on this play. Sunberg rolls out. Braswell coming around the outside, and right now he got rid of it. Lubbers was up there with a hand to knock it down. It'll bring up fourth and five. Jim Lubbers, one of the Red Helmet recipients from Shell Rock, Iowa, homegrown. 6'5", 239 pounds. Nebraska way out of field goal range on a day like today. It would be a 47-yarder. Oh, They're going to go for it on fourth and five. Sunberg back to throw. In, got time and threw that one away over the middle. 
No flags. Iowa State's defense holds it. Everybody looking for a flag, but there is none. Great back is Sunberg looking over the middle. Okay, and thought that maybe number 38 got hit, but I don't think so. I think he just tripped a little bit. Jim Thompson out of Blair, Nebraska. Iowa State is going to take over now at their own 31 and a half, 32 yard line. Motion goes David Smolt, who's a tight end to the right side. Play action fake by Hood. Throwing over the middle into a crowd, and is it intercepted? I don't know. It's incomplete at the spot, but there's a flag down back around the line of scrimmage. The official right on the scene says incomplete, but boy, that hit interception written all over it. Come on, get the players off the field. Throw downfield. I think it was tended for Tracy Henderson. Yep, the red helmet right there. Nebraska player went up to bring it down, but I think it was knocked out of his hands. Brett Clark, the defender, and a flag is down. Well, here comes the first penalty of the day, and it's going to be holding against Iowa State. Let's see if Nebraska wants to assess it and maintain first down or simply take the loss of down. It's only going to be a five-yard penalty, I believe. Alan Hood and Brett Clark, the two captains out chatting with the official. Well, it will be declined. So just simply count that one as an incomplete pass. And it's second down and 10 now for Iowa State, still at their own 32-yard line. Alan Hood has been intercepted four times this season. He's attempted 42 passes. I remember those those three of those three of those were against Iowa in the first half. High formation and in motion goes Richard Hansen to the near side. Hood quarterback draw running room maybe a first down maybe a yard shy of it. Mark Mumford catches him from behind and a good call by Alan Hood. Just a great call. I'll tell you wherever it came from the press box or the sideline or whatever. But Alan Hood on a quarterback draw. Takes a couple of steps back. Look at the opening up the middle. And watch 63. Big guard out to make a block. Alan Hood goes left side of it and is very, very close to the first down, about a half yard short. Vince Jasper was number 63, the man that made that good block for Hood. So now it's third down and a short one. In motion goes Smolt. And Hood back to throw. Over the middle, intercepted. This time Clark. Tracy Henderson drawing a crowd out there had double coverage and Clark was just waiting in the wings for the ball to be thrown. Tracy Henderson was not open had good coverage Alan Hood pushed it into a crowd and you'll notice down here there's about three guys around Henderson two short of him and one long and Henderson was pretty well covered Clark stepped in made the interception Nebraska will have it first and ten at their own at the Cyclone 47. Alan Hood just simply picked the wrong receiver to go to that time. Four minutes, 57 seconds left to go in the first half. Nebraska still leading 10 nothing, And now starting out inside the Cyclone territory. Jeff Smith straight up the middle. And boy, that man do have some running power. All the way down to about the 41-yard line. A gain of five, five and a half on the play. And Jeff Braswell, along with Randy Richards, makes the tackle for Iowa State. Well, they hit him low and put him on the turf immediately. There was no extra yardage on that play, but he did pick up a good solid five. I don't know how he got through that line, boy. They, every time they run, it seems like five yards a carry. You know, I'll tell you, that offensive line of Nebraska is sizable and experienced. They do move people. Well, it's Rathman, the fullback this time, and look at this. Down to the 20-yard line of Iowa State. Finally caught by Kevin Williams. Just a straightaway handoff. Defensive lineman there, but now you notice that's not really great running. All it is is he has good blocking out in front of him. Good tackle, good saving tackle made, but Nebraska has it first and ten at the Cyclone 21. Harry Griminger, the left guard for Nebraska, really carved a hole in that defensive line. First and ten. Here's the option now by Travis Turner. Turns the corner, and he's tripped up. Tripped by Randy Richards just about the line of scrimmage, but he falls forward for about two yards. Look down the line. Watch Travis Turner. Now he'll look. He's watching number 58 and 50 or 45 and 59. Sees what the block does. Turns upfield and has just tripped up. Picked up just a couple. 
Someplace in there he has to make the decision to keep the football or try and pitch it to the trailback. He's a little change of direction. Jeff Smith, and boy, if he would have maintained his footage, he had wide open alley down to the corner of the end zone, but a flag is down on the play. Holding. And we're going to have holding against Nebraska, so that one will go for naught. Johnson, uh, Shane Swanson in motion, and Sunberg over the middle, and a good defensive play by Anthony Mays. Boy, Swanson was the intended receiver, and Mays really stuck him. Good collision. Anthony Mays, a fine, fine defensive back, wearing the red helmet. Just a straight shot over the middle. Football and Anthony Mays arrive almost simultaneously. Brings up third down in about 15. Pass was a little bit behind him. Anthony Mays, of course, a junior from Wichita Falls, Texas. And what an asset he has been for Iowa State this year. Third down and 17. And maybe a very marginable uh, field goal effort if they don't make it here. Here's the keeper and an option by Travis Turner. And he is going to be stopped at least 10, if not 11 yards short of the first down. Randy Richards and Jim Lubers catches up with him. But he rolls down to about the Iowa State 21. And now the Huskers may be within field goal range. I'm not going to go for it, though. Bringing in Kimball and Jim Thompson. Thompson, a wingback, 190 pounder. They're wingbacks. 5'9, 200 is one of them, 5'9, 190 the other. Not very tall, but quite wide. Well, DeBose and Rathman now in there at running backs, and they're going to go for it. Fourth down and 11. Here's the keeper, Turner, and he's going to be sacked. First man to hit him was Lester Mitchell. Lester Williams. Lester Williams, I mean. Good defensive play. Bertheson and Braswell along to help. Turner rolls back. Right now, he's in trouble. Right now, he's in trouble. Lester Williams is there. Others come along to help. Just an excellent, excellent defensive play. Well, Iowa State will take over on downs now. And Iowa State starts out at their own 30 and one half yard line. Two minutes, 15 seconds left to go in the first half. Nebraska faking a little corner blitz, and they're coming. Hood blasted back at his 20. And he is dropped by Scott Strasburger, the blitzing defensive end. Oh, and I'll tell you, nobody picked him up. I think he was just rush blocked, and he arrived right there, gets by the block by Hanson, and he's right in Allen Hood's face almost immediately. That good speed. A 6'1", 205-pound senior defensive end. Not very big with, with great speed. Loss of 11 on the play. Strasburger lined up that time as an outside linebacker. He was showing blitz, and he came untouched. Second and 21. Hanson in motion to the near side. Here's the quarterback draw, and Hood has nowhere to go, and he's going to lose two more, and a helmet even rolls off. Mark Dom credited with the tackle. Somebody lost their head on that play. Probably Hood. Used to be they just tackled. Now it's a war. Well, Iowa State has marched drastically backwards. And now we're down inside minute five to go in the first half. Football started to roll away. First down, strongly in favor of the Huskers, 9-3. to three. And if ever there were a passing situation, this is it. Timeout. And now timeout's going to be called as the 25-second clock. Right, goes Hanson now with third down and 22. Blitz is coming, and Hood steps up in the pocket. He's going to try to run with it, and he's caught from behind by number 76, Chris Spockman, the defensive tackle. And that has to say something also yeah. for the speed of the defensive lineman. And Hood now may be hurt. You can coach a little bit of speed, but you basically recruit the speed and worry about technique and other things from then on. But uh, that's good speed by Spockman. He's 6'4", 260, a sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri. Caught Hood from behind. Well, now Hood is being assisted by the trainers over on the sideline. He limps off the field. And keep in mind, next in line is De Derek DeGenero, only a freshman at quarterback should Hood be disabled. And after DeGenero, then it's Gene Dahlquist, the offensive coordinator. 
Oh, I have a Lincoln Lincoln fellow. Scott Crimmins would be the next one down the line. And I think there are two quarterbacks, De Janeiro and Crimmins, that they in the future do expect good things from. Crimmins, a pretty good quarterback out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Well, Nebraska called timeout to stop the clock there. And now Jim Thompson is on to do the punting. And this time he'll have the pleasure of the wind at his back. Maybe Remember, that'll help him. This is one of the things that Nebraska does well. Jeff Smith and Shane Swanson deep. Good snap. And Thompson with an end over end kick. This one is really going to take an Iowa State roll, but Smith feels it inside his own 25, across the 30, back to the 35. And he's going to be dumped at about the 36-yard line. And stopping him in there was number 44. That's Mark Matusak. So Nebraska with 29 seconds left to play in the first half now. Starting out at about their own 36. And Matusak, a freshman out of Omaha, Nebraska, played at Creighton Prep. Expect pretty good things from him as a defensive back. Good size, 6 feet, 199 pounds. Probably go 210 by the time he's a junior. Nebraska wasting no time in lining up over the football. Here's a little draw play, this time to DeBose, and he gets up close to the 30 yard line. End of about three and a half on the play. Jim Lubers, I believe, down at the bottom of the pile. Also, here's the quarterback. Scott Porter is the fullback, and I believe it's Doug DeBose in there at tailback. And here's a little rollout. And Turner going long down the sidelines. The ball skirts out of bounds. Even if it was caught, it would have been out of bounds. Intended for Jim Thompson, the wing back for Nebraska. A defensive play by Kevin Williams and also by the wind and a flag down. And we may have roughing the passer on Lester Williams. Lester, of course, complaining to the official right now. Not going to do any good. But it was a rollout play. And it'll be a 15 yarder against the Cyclones. Push the ball into Iowa State territory at the 45. Roughing the passer on Lester Williams. Now the chain gang will move. It's a first down, and there are 13 seconds left to go in the half, and Nebraska still has a timeout remaining. Well, that long throw downfield, the wind just ate it up. Turner. Over the middle, and this one is collected down around the Iowa State 30. And let's see if it's complete. One of the officials signaling maybe it was out of bounds. They mark it down. No, they put it out of bounds. Well, he just drilled it against the wind. Receiver in just a little bit of a crack between the defense, right in front of Kevin Williams. Scott Kimball, the receiver, the senior split in. Came into the ball game with seven catches and 86 yards. Seven seconds remaining could well be the last play. And Turner going down towards the corner. And that one is out of bounds. Yeah, caught by Jason Gamble. Out of bounds. I think the defensive play down there was made by An Terrence Anthony. Gamble, the he was in a little hand-to-hand -hand cop mat early. As you see right here, he caught it. Definitely out of bounds, no question about it. Well, now there are only two seconds remaining, so we are going to have a Nebraska field goal attempt. And Scott Livingston will be on to attempt a 48-yard field goal into the wind. Livingston is the normal punter. Keep that in mind. Good snap. And it's blocked by Iowa State. Partially deflected. Off to the left, and that'll end the half. So it's halftime here at Cyclone Stadium in Jack Price Field. And let's take another look one more time and see who got credit for this charge through the line here. Mm, right there on the left, but I can't pick out the number. It's halftime, and back roads kick sailing. Down into the end zone. Gamble downs it there, and they will not return it. So a good job by Mark Backroad on the kickoff, and Nebraska is starting out the second half at their own 20 yard line. Receivers split to both sides. Swanson in the slot to the left. And this time right up the middle. Tom Rathman, the fullback, gets up across the 25 to about the 27 yard line. The tackle made by Anthony Mays, the free safety. So a big gain of about 
seven or eight on the first carry from scrimmage. Anthony Mays hit him hard, but not until after a pretty good pickup. Make it a gain of seven. Second down and three. Travis Turner, 48 of 91 for 84 coming into the ball game. This time, counter the other way. Jeff Smith gets the call, and he only gets a gain of about one or two. Barry Moore makes the tackle for Iowa State. Caught him from the backside and really drove him into the ground. You watch, see the pulling lineman out to get Lester Williams. And right there is Barry Moore coming down from the backside and really hammered Jeff Smith. It'll bring up third and about one. Well, actually a short one, about a half. Nebraska doesn't have very far to go for the first down. Just underway with the second half. The Huskers leading 10 to nothing. The pitch goes back to Jeff Smith. Stringing it out, he has the first down across the 30 to about the 33. And Randy Richards cuts him down. Next week, Iowa State will be at home once again. The final home game of 1984, and that game will be an early start due to television coverage along the Big 8 network. And you'll see that game, of course, in Central Iowa on 5 TV. Ooh, Rathman, the fullback, met at the line of scrimmage by Bill Bertheson, the left defensive tackle. Bertheson, a youngster out of Marshalltown, and uh, going to be a good replacement when Steve Little and Barry Moore graduate, the two defensive tackles. But excellent work. Bertheson hit him head on and just put him right over on his back. Loss of a half yard on the play. And it's not very often Nebraska is stacked for a loss. There's Jim Kreiner looking on. Wants that football. Here's the rollout by Turner. Throwing over the middle. Has his man. First down, maybe. Just short of it, perhaps. But it was complete to number 94, Brian Heimer, the tight end. Anthony Mays in on the tackle. And a good, quick decision by Travis Turner, the quarterback. Saw the receiver open and just zipped it to him. Just a little dart. And it's going to be close to the first down. Well, they're going to bring the chains out and measure. That's how close it is. The ball is spotted just short of the 44-yard line. And they have got it by the length of the football easily. Just under 13 minutes to go in the third quarter. 12 minutes, 57 seconds to be exact. And the Huskers marching right up the field. 11th first down for Nebraska. Started out at their own 20-yard line. Mixing up the run and the pass quite well. Kickoff time next week here at Cyclone Stadium. 11-34. And the opponent will be the Kansas State Wildcats. Here's a little option play by Travis Turner. Wants to tuck it away and keep it himself. And Lester Williams going for the football. And I don't know how he did it, but Turner danced for about four or five in heavy traffic. Good blocking out in front of the play by Mark Benning, big fellow out of Denton, Texas. 6'6", 290, senior, the left tackle. Spot the ball down on the Husker 49, a solid gain of five. Second down and five for Nebraska. Rathman and DeBose in there at the running backs. The handoff to Rathman, the fullback, straight up the middle. A tough one across midfield, and maybe to the Cyclone 49. And there on the bottom of the stack, Lester Williams getting up from the tackle, along with Barry Moore. Well, brings up a third down and three now. Let's see whether or not Nebraska is going to go to the air, if they're going to keep the ball on the ground. Nebraska three for nine in third down situations. The Cyclones yet to convert one for a first down. In motion goes to Bones. The rollout by Turner. Throwing long, excellent defensive play by Anthony Mays. Oh, beautiful. Bats it down, intended for Jason, uh, correction, Todd Crane. This is fine work by Mays. Went right over the top, reached up, batted it down with one hand. Good throw by Turner. Threw it between some outstretched, outstretched arms, but there's Anthony Mays right over the top. Intended receiver, I believe, was Crane. Well, that stops the clock with 11.27 to go in the third, and now we're going to have Scott Livingston back deep to punt. Billy McHugh back to receive now for Iowa State. Livingston today, 44-yard average, and this one's going to be a short line drive. McHugh will not touch it. 
And Nebraska will doubt it at about the 23. McHugh had second thoughts on that, perhaps, as the wind held it up. Took a high bounce at about the 25, but they will spot the ball down at the Iowa State Hanson in there at running back. Here's the fake play action fake, and Hood being chased. Now throws cross field and hits, I believe, Smolt. David Smolt, but he's going to be dropped just back about the original line of scrimmage by Mark Mumford and Mike McCaslin. Alan Hood makes a pretty good move to get away from the defensive player, but he's back. He has to throw a cross field. Number 52 in on him quick, and he has to throw a cross field. Took a long time for it to get there, and Smolt just had no running room at all, was well covered. It goes for about a half yard loss. You seldom do you see a pass play go for lost yardage, but that was the case on that one. Again, the play action fake. Hood over the middle, has Henderson in and out of his hands, and then almost intercepted by Brett Clark. Oh, there's one that Tracy won't miss very often. I thought this was a pretty well-thrown football, George. It really was. It was right in there a little bit high, but the kind of catch that Henderson usually makes quite easily. Good protection for Hood. Henderson, just, I don't know what happened, and I don't think he could explain it either. Ooh. It was right there. He ran a good route and was wide open. Well, now, big third down play coming up for Iowa State. Keep in mind that they have not converted on third down thus far in the ball game. Third down and 11. In motion goes Hanson. Hood straight back. And now he's going to be chased from behind. He's going to tuck it away and run for it. And I don't know. He may have the first down. He's close. Going to be about a half a yard short the way it looks. It depends on where they mark that football. I think the length of the football is going to be just short. It's just about it. It's one of those I think it was a little later in the game they'd go for it without a doubt. If you had a 235 pound fullback, that would be different. But when you're running with a 190 pounder and a 165 or 170 pound tailback, it does make a difference. Now there's the chain, and it's going to be short by about a foot. And Iowa State brings on the punting unit. Fans aren't too happy about it. Too early in the ball game. Ten nothing. This ball game still up for grabs. Jim Thompson on the punt. And again, remember, this is the Nebraska, one of their strong suits, running back punts, and they'll have a lot of time if he hits it. They need to get some hang time if he can on this one. We've got Jeff Smith and Shane Swanson back deep to receive for the Huskers. High snap from scrimmage. And he does get a high one. This one sailing down to Smith. He takes it and then drops the football and then is buried at the spot of contact. Right at the 10 or 11. Greg Butts right there making a heck of a hit. And we'll be back with more here at Cyclone Stadium after these words from your local station. It's going to be Travis Turner, Tom Rathman, and I believe we've got Doug DeBose in there at tailback. And the Bose gets the call straight up the middle for little, if any, gain. And good interior defensive line play right here. That's the smallest pile of about 15 guys you might ever see. You're right there, and you see Lester Williams over the top. I think down at the bottom of the pile someplace is Braswell. He'll pop out of the pile on that backside. But a good defensive effort by the Cyclones. About a half yard gain. It's like to beat the guy on the bottom there. Nebraska offensive line when they're trying to block and get buried like that. Nine minutes and 27 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Second down and nine. They give him a gain of one. This time the tail back to Bose again. Breaks a hole open for about five. Gets up across the 15 to about the 17 yard line. Anthony Davis and Randy Richards makes the stop. I don't know what the status is on Tim Iverson. He was slated as a starter earlier in the week, and Randy Richards has been playing most of this ball game at strong linebacker. Now here's a big third down in terms of field position now because it's third and four, and it's on the Husker 18-yard line, and you can hear the fans rallying the defense. Turner, quarterback keeper, and he stopped. Immediately by Bill number Bertheson. 95, Bill Bertheson. Bertheson stayed right at home on this play. Watch 95 right in the middle of your picture. Goes down, splits his two blockers, and he'll come up on the other side with Travis Turner in hand. Oh. Good defensive play. Look at that. 
he was being buried by Greg Orton, the right guard there, had a man on top of him and still made the tackle. Cyclones will, should get good field position out of this. Bill Livingston the punt and the single deep back for Iowa State is going to be Bill McHugh. And this one, oh, he booms one. McHugh has to really backpedal. Takes it at his own 39. Cuts cross field and goes nowhere. Excellent pursuit by Nebraska, but still good field position for Iowa State. Hey, that's a great into the wind punt. 45 yard kick into the wind. You just couldn't have asked for a better one at a proper time. Cyclones at their own 39. Well, he turned that one over. Get that tip of the ball down so it's not hanging in the wind and travel. Hanson and Davis will stun out in the eye. Robbie Miner split to the near side. Tracy Henderson to the far side. First down and 10. Iowa State second possession of the first half. Here's the pitch back to Hanson. Then a little flea flicker. Back to Hood. And he's going to scamper. And he gets a tough eight. And he is really hammered out of bounds at about the 47-yard line by Mike McCashlin. That's one of the first uh, little different plays that we've seen this year. Hanson laterals back to Allen Hood. Hood turns it upfield, but it's going to go for not. Well, we've got a flag on the play, and it doesn't look good for Iowa State. Kevin Eggleston, probably a clip, may have clipped on the play. Let's see what the indication is, because the yardage is going to be marched against the Cyclones. Mm, that's tough. There's five. There's ten. And there's 15 all the way back to the 20-yard line. And it is a clip. So now instead of second down and about two, it's going to bring up first down and 25. Let's take a look at the officials today. John Laurie is the referee. John Laurie is the one that's breaking in as a referee. I think we had him out at Colorado. Slot left formation. In motion goes Miner now to the far side. And the draw play for Tommy Davis and he gets nowhere ran into some of his own blocking Ken shed the backup nose guard in there made the tackle on Tommy Davis. See it from Tommy, the end zone. Tommy Davis notice a step to the left kind of sneaks over. There's the draw. Here's Hanson out in front. He had a little bit of a hole trying to push off one blocker Eric Kundorf and uh, Nebraska recovered too quickly that good team speed by Nebraska. Stopped what could have been a pretty good play. Well, they lose one on the play. It's second down and, well, 28 on that graphic. Now the play action fake. Hood with a deep drop, then going over the middle, intercepted. And this one may go for six. Nope. All the way down to the five. Bill Weber, the defensive end, picks it off for the Huskers. And Nebraska is knocking on the door again. Dave Smolt made the touchdown saving stop. But Alan Hood back to throw has good protection. It's a little pressure at the end, but really threw it into a cloud crowd intended for Robbie Miner. Football picked off and run back by Bill Weber of Lincoln. It'll be at the six yard line. You know, Robbie Miner was the antenna receiver. He had three men covering him, and I don't know why Alan Hood just he just stayed glued on Miner and never gave up on him. Here's Doug DeBose. Touchdown, Nebraska. One play, six yards, six points. DeBose just outside. Notice the good blocking outside ahead of him. They seal the cyclone ends and linebackers inside, and he just tiptoes into the end zone. Well, now it's 16 nothing Nebraska, and Dale Klein on to try to tack on the point after. He's one for one today. Iowa State taking the wind here in the second half and it hasn't been of any assistance thus far. Wait a minute. The point after is no good. It is missed. Interesting. 16 nothing is the score. Nebraska on top. We'll be back with a Husker kickoff in just a moment. Sailing straight away center. It's being held up by the wind. And now Tucker finally lets it bounce and then grabs it and starts up field and he's tripped at about the 12 yard line and a flag goes down also. Clip coming up. There's Tucker. You saw the clip, I believe, right there by Posey. 
Got a little piece of number 41 from the backside. And that'll put the Cyclones deep in their own territory. Put it back inside the 10 yard line at about the six or seven. Something in the old days that they did use occasionally out of single wing in the old Notre Dame box was a quick kick, but I don't think that's been done here at Iowa State since Clay Stapleton was coach. Be a great situation for it. Well, Iowa State starts out in the eye formation. Both receivers split to the near side. Allen Hood, play action fake, rolls out. Throws to Hanson out of the backfield, complete across the 15 up to about the 18-yard line. Mike McCashlin drops Hanson there, and Hanson a little slow getting up. Going to be a first down, I believe. First, first down of the second half. And Richard Hanson, doggone it, he just an excellent back, has great moves, great speed, everything. Good hands, but just lacks that size. Was a receiver and converted him to a back. Notice that good move out of the backfield, but right here, he and McCashlin have a collision. McCashlin's going to win it. First and ten, and this time the rollout's to the right side. And he goes to Tommy Davis, complete, for another first down. Flag down. And a flag down back around the line of scrimmage, maybe holding against Iowa State. Can't really tell who it is. Hood rolls out and just gets a little short one off to Tommy Davis. And this is what they did so well against Nebraska last year. A little short passes. They used Jason Jacobs well out of the backfield and had some pretty good offensive stats. Well, it is not holding. It's an ineligible receiver downfield. And if that's the case, that's loss of down also, isn't it? And Jeff Wadka to the near side. Hood going out for minor. Heavy pass rush on, and it's overthrown. Tracy had one-on-one -on -one coverage on the near side, but the pass play obviously going to the other side. Say Nebraska has scouted the Cyclones well. They seem to have three people around where the primary receiver is on almost every play. Tom Osborne said earlier in the week he was not going to favor covering Tracy Henderson. He said you can't. They put Henderson in too many different positions out there, and it's hard to devote your entire passing defense against Henderson. Hood's got time, and he's going to run up to the 20, but he's still going to be way short of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth down and about eight. Cyclones have still yet to convert a third down play, as I have it. Now, they may have made one first down, but they've had seven opportunities. And pretty good long yardage, 11, 15, and 27, and three of them, so you can't much fault them there. Thompson today averaging 36.2 yards a punt. Needs a good one here. 55 was the last one, of course, with the wind at his back. High snap from center. And an end over end boomer. Headed down for Shane Swanson. He drops the football at his own 24, then picks it up, gets up across the 30, the 35, and back to the 40. The Cyclone players had a pretty good shot at him, but just really overran him. Swanson dropped the football, but he's the one that ran one back against uh, somebody a couple weeks ago. Little fella plays wing back. Don't forget next week, Kansas State here at Cyclone Stadium and Jack Trice Field for the final home game of 1984. It's going to be Porter in there at fullback, and I believe it's still DeBose at tailback and a slot formation to the left side. Here's Porter, the fullback, straight up the middle, gets a tough one or two. Randy Richards, Lester Williams in there in the bottom of the pile for the red and gold. Bring him about three on the play. Second down and seven coming up with 5.09 left to go in the third quarter. Nebraska leading 16 nothing. In motion, Shane Swanson. Here's the rollout by Travis Turner. He'll tuck it away and keep it and gets across the 45 to about the 47. Jeff Braswell and Jim Lubers make the tackle for Iowa State. Turner, an excellent runner. And he's only a junior, so in mid or mid season, Tom Osborne made the switch. Craig Sundberg started out as the starting quarterback, but he's a senior, and here you got Travis Turner, who's got two seasons with the Huskers, and he has performed very admirably. 
started for the Huskers following that loss to Syracuse. Turner on the rollout. Going down to the near side, incomplete. It was intended for Jim Thompson, the wingback, who was in motion on the play. Kevin Williams was there on defense. Well, a fourth and three coming up now, and it looks like Nebraska's going to punt the football away. So Iowa State's defense holds. You know, Nebraska's had 12 attempts at the third down conversion and have done it just three times. Livingston, as you saw, averaging 38 yards per punt today, and he's longest a 45-yarder. Iowa State almost, almost blocked that one. Here's a shank punt. And everybody trying to stay away from it. Remember how you used to spin a football and it yep. would stand up? That's what it was doing on the field. Little top. Iowa State will have good field position this possession. They start out at their own 31-yard line. Willie Pop Everett uh, was coming down near that football, and Billy McHugh called him off. Kansas State in town against the Cyclones next week at Cyclones. Here's the eye now. Play action fake by Hood, and the pursuit is coming. And he unloads it deep, throws it away out of bounds. In and section 26 and paid the price down there also he was really hassled down there by big number 99 Ken shed the middle guard Oklahoma the big winner today over Missouri and the rushing statistics 180 to 24 in the yardage department Nebraska doing their usual outstanding job against an opponent's rushing game. Here's the rollout by Hood. He's going to have to hurry. Gets it up to Tommy Davis, and he can't grab the handle. A little bit behind him. And the ball just sort of bobbled around there and then hit the turf. So now it's third down and 10. Tracy Henderson took the defensive back on the near side downfield. Hood rolls out, has good protection, throws it just a little bit behind. It bobbled. And Tommy Davis couldn't get the hands on it again, but he'd have picked up, I think, pretty close to the first down if he'd caught it. In motion goes Robbie Miner. Tracy's one on one. Oh, draw play. Draw play to Richard Hansen. It is sniffed out by Jim Scow, the defensive tackle for Nebraska, and there's a loss of about three on the play. So Iowa State stopped in its tracks and Thompson comes on to punt again. And again it's going to be Jeff Smith and Shane Swanson back 40.3 yards per punt today not bad 61 yarder the longest. Good snap plenty of time and an end over end line drive. Ooh, takes a an Iowa State roll and then rolls into the end zone. 72 yard kick but it'll still come out to the 20 yard on it'll make it to 52 yard 72 yards well, time now starting to become a factor with the score 16 nothing the Huskers Iowa State's got to start getting some offense going here only three minutes 10 seconds left to go in the third period Keep in mind, Iowa State has been traditionally this year, Georgia, second half ball team offensively. There's been what? One turnover so far in the football game? One, two. Two interceptions. Sunberg is the quarterback, and he gives out to Doug DeBose, and he has plenty of running room up across the 30, down to the 34 yard line. Willie Pop Everett in there on the hip, along with a couple other Cyclones. First down for Nebraska, good 14 yard pickup by DeBose. Good speed, 5'11", 185 pounds sophomore out of Uncasville, Connecticut. Seems like they just graduate one eye back and they pick up another one. Jeff Smith, a senior this year, and DuBose has filled in quite admirably when Smith was injured. Clouding up out of here now. Here's the handoff to the fullback Porter. He tries the middle there and goes little, if any, forward. Maybe a yard to about 35. And Lester Williams and Barry Moore make the top of the tackle. Well, uh, one thing you got to say for Tom Osborne, though, he must not be too confident. He hasn't pulled all the first teamers out of there yet. I don't think with a 16-point lead you can count on anything. Iowa State has played very admirably defensively. Offensively, they have sputtered. Here's the keeper by Sunberg. Maybe gets a yard. 
Randy Richards makes the stop for Iowa State. Good hit on the corner by Richards. This is one where you have to cover the pitch man. You see the pitch man out there, Shane Swanson. But he turns upfield, and Gibson makes him head on. Good hit by Gibson. Sophomore out of Ankin. Or Randy Richards, excuse me. Out of Urbandale. Another sophomore. Keep in mind that almost everybody except the defensive tackles are going to be returning next year for Iowa State. And they've got the 19th best defense in the nation. Here's the draw play to DeBose. And Iowa State snuffs that one for a loss led by Bill Bertheson. Okay. And there's, there's one of the people that's going to replace either Barry Moore or Steve Little. Bertheson and Greg Leiter are going to inherit that job. And I'll tell you, they have done a fine job. You see right there, Bertheson took DuBose and just stopped him with one arm, and they put him on his back. Iowa State is going to be very, very stiff defensively next year. Now the punt has been a popular item here in the second half, and Nebraska now is going to have to do it again. Their only score here in the second half coming up with a pass interception. Livingston will have to hurry, but he hits all of this one. Fair catch called for by McHugh at his own 30-yard line, and Iowa State will put it in play right there. Boy, Livingston has really kicked it well. Well, we have about 53 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Information. Hanson in motion to the near side. Straight drop back by Hood. Little screen pass out to Tommy Davis. And he's going to be dropped for a loss of one. Mark Mumford come in, came in there and rolled Tommy out of bounds. Ball was spotted originally across the 30. Now it's going to be behind 30. Again, that great team speed. This one just took a little bit long to develop. By the time Davis caught it, the defensive backs were already on the way up. Just a little bit long. Goes for a loss of one, second at 11. Well, unless there's an incomplete pass, this ought to be the last play of the third quarter. Let's see what happens. Roll out by Hood, and he's going to be dropped for a loss. He is stuck by Chris Spockman, the defensive tackle back at the 25-yard line. Well, Ken Graber hit him a little bit late, but... Uh, Nothing happens. Well, Hood, a little bit shaken up down there. And it's only third down. Seven seconds left if they run another play. They want to punt with the wind. Kick it with the wind. So talk about your quick kick earlier. We're going to have one right here. Punting on third down. Nebraska trainer was out in the middle of the field for uh, quite a little while. Watch it. Maybe a fake. We've got a man split wide as a wide receiver here. I don't think so. Ooh, almost blocked. But Thompson really nails one. And it's a fumble. But then finally, Nebraska's number 33, Dave Burke, who is a cornerback, picked it up, and he's rolled down at about his own 20-yard line. And that will expire the third quarter. So at the end of three here at Cyclone Stadium, the Nebraska Cornhuskers still with all the offense in the game, leading 16 to nothing. Second winning as coach in college football, Tom Osborne. And Nebraska takes over as they start the fourth quarter with the ball on their own 20-yard line. Iowa State utilizing their third down to punt the ball with the win, and Jim Thompson booted a 55-yarder. We'll probably see just about everybody in the ball game here in the fourth quarter for the Huskies. Travis Turner gives it to DeBose on a little counter, and he's wide open. I don't know if anybody's going to catch him. It may be Kevin Williams, but he misses, and it is gone. An 80-yard touchdown run for Doug DeBose, the sophomore tailback, and Nebraska runs out to a 22-0 lead. Take a look at it. Cuts up behind big number 77. A good block and gets by Anthony Mays right there and he's on his own. But I'll tell you, made a good effort to catch him right here. Almost ran him down. Got a piece of him but couldn't quite hold on to him. Kevin Williams had the good speed to catch him from behind but it goes as an 80-yard touchdown. Well, now we've got Dale Klein on to the point after. He's one for two today and this one is up. And it is good. So, one play in the fourth quarter. Nebraska tacks on seven more. It's 23 to nothing. 
Huskers with 14.48 to play in the ball game. A little run for their money this year, but they still have to decide next week whether or not Oklahoma is going to be penalized a couple of ball games due to using an ineligible player. Posey collects it down in the end zone, bobbles it momentarily, then downs at Iowa State will start out at their own 20-yard line. So even though Oklahoma has been rolling most of their opponents and a big winner over Missouri today, next week, the faculty representatives of the Big 8 Conference will meet and determine whether or not Oklahoma will have to forfeit their game with Kansas State and one prior to that. 23-0, Huskers. I'll tell you, Alan Hood has taken a battering today. It's 9 out of 17 with two interceptions thus far in the ball game. Only 37 yards in the passing department. Here's the pitch back to Hanson. He falls on it, bobbled the football, and then covers it. And there will be a loss on the play. Mike McCashlin right there on Hanson. And as you can see, they move the sticks back about three yards. Well, they're trying to get the wave going here in Cyclone Stadium, and even that isn't working today. They had her going at the Oklahoma night game. It's one of the most active crowds I've ever seen, and Cyclone's down 23 to nothing. The defensive unit has played extremely well. One breakdown, really. Here's the rollout by Hood. Upfield, intercepted. Picked off by Dennis Watkins, and he's still on his feet. Should have been a clip right there, and they sure didn't call it. Finally rolled out of bounds inside the 25, and Iowa State does have a man down inside the 10. That's Hood. No, Not Tommy, Tommy Davis. Davis. Hood was over there near the tackle. Pass thrown, and it's intended for Robbie Miner or Tracy Henderson. If it was Miner, it was... A little long. If it was Henderson, it was short. Watkins picked it off. Official trying to get out of the way. And he'll get sho Hood shoved him out of bounds. Hood's the man that chased him out of bounds. Well, we've got Rathman and DeBose in there now. And here's the play action fake going down to the corner of the end zone. And a flag down. And let's see who that's going to go against. That ought to go against Nebraska, in my opinion. Sure should. Jason Gamble literally shoved Kevin Williams. See what it looks like. Take a look, Nebraska. Travis Turner going quickly for the kill. Throws it down. Huh. It's, they call it against Iowa State. Pass interference against Iowa State. And if that's the case, it'll be 15 yards and first down, and that'll mean it'll be first and goal. Well, I'd have to disagree with that. I thought that. The, Player had defensive position, has the rights to go for the football, turned and was knocked to the ground. Coach Kreiner having a little talk with the official. Well, now it is, what, official's timeout? That's the indication Jim Kreiner wants to talk to the referee. Keith Enzone Jones comes into the ball game at one of the running backs now, and here's the head referee going over talking with Jim Kreiner. And Jim is trying to explain to him, hey, freshman tailback now, and he's averaging 9.3 yards a carry. And here's the keeper by Travis Turner's touchdown. Turner rolls out and just all by himself had a receiver in the end zone, but uh, just completely a fake. Turner rolled out, goes seven yards for the touchdown. I'll tell you what, ten guys were playing one game and Turner was playing another one. And now once again, Dale Klein in here to attempt the point after. And the kick is up. And it is good. Three out of four today. And it's a 30 to nothing ball game, and there are 13 minutes, 48 seconds left to play. And Nebraska still has a mountain of time there to put even more points in the board. Some of the fans even leaving for the exits already. The cyclone, 22 seconds. Tucker is going to let this one bounce in the end zone, and that one ought to come up to the 20. 
Bring it out to the 20. It'll lit in the end zone. If it lands out of the end zone, they bring it out to the 30. Cyclones once again against the wind and with not great field position down 30 to nothing. We got news for you. We got Derek DeGenero in there at quarterback. Mike Allen's been battered pretty well. Derek DeGenero, only a freshman, will be the quarterback now. He is making his first appearance in a varsity football game right now. And the handoff goes to Hanson. And he pays the price and gets maybe a tough one or two right up the middle. And a fumble, and it's Nebraska football. A long time for that to develop. Up to me, like the ball carrier went into the line, the play was called dead, and uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know who you give the fumble to there, the player or the official. <laughs> I wasn't down there and I can't see it and we don't have a close-up of that one so here we go first and ten on the 20 Craig Sunberg the quarterback loses the handle on the football and Iowa State recovers Dennis Gets Gibson right comes up with it with a gain of five <laughs> Sunberg was the quarterback and uh, just a mix up on the handoff the ball popped up in the air Sunberg looked like he was going to catch it and move it but couldn't get a hold of it and Gibson comes up with it for the Cyclones Sophomore linebacker out of Ankeny. Well, Iowa State, by means of two consecutive fumbles, moves the ball four yards and has a first to ten at the 24. And there's Derek DeGenero. Running backs are going to be Davis and Michael Posey now in a tailback. Richard Hansen, who probably got credited with that fumble last time, did probably get in a little rest there on the sidelines. Handoff goes to Posey. And he gets good yardage. Tough three or four. Finally, Jim Scow makes the tackle for the Huskers, and they move the ball out close to the 30-yard line. It'll be spotted down at about the 29. 13 minutes, 22 seconds and counting. Left to play in this football game, and the Huskers lead 30-zip. Dave Smolt comes back on the field at tight end, replacing Jeff Wadka. And I'm sure right now, you know, this is probably they're going to have to alternate tight ends because I don't think De Janeiro knows all the hand signs over there. I don't think so. He might possibly. So they're going to have to send the plays in from the sidelines now with changing tight ends. De Janeiro on the rollout. Intercept. Threw it right into the waiting hands of Greg Reeves. And down he goes inside the 15. And Eric Hundorf, the left guard, finally makes the tackle. Oh, correction. David Smolt makes the tackle, I believe. De Janeiro this time got just a little bit of a hurry. Uh, overthrew the receiver and right into the waiting hands of the big defender. Pulled it in. Greg Reeves and Nebraska has it inside the 15 at the 14 yard line. Well three plays or four plays and three turnovers. First and 10 on the 13 yard line. This time Sunberg gives to the tailback Keith Jones the freshman. Gets across the 15 down to about the 13-yard line. Steve Little down at the bottom of the pile, making the tackle for Iowa State. Second and nine, gain of one. And here's Jones again. And he gets, whoa, loose football, but I think he was already down on the turf. Jones, a 5'10", 180-pounder out of Omaha Central. Takes the handoff again with that good acceleration. Cyclone defenders there, Braswell, one of them. Yeah, his knee was down. Football loose, but uh, tell you what, Nebraska you retains it. Keep that name in mind for the next four years. Keep in zone Jones. Here's a little keeper. Little option by Craig Sunberg, the quarterback. Lester Williams and Steve Little wrap him up. That Jones is going to be a phenomenal running back for Nebraska by the time he graduates. And they always have plenty. One of those, one of those guys that starts out at 180 as a freshman. He'll be 190 as a sophomore, 200 as a junior, and about 210 as a senior weight program over there which is one of the finest in the countries and 
Of course, the Iowa straight weight coach is a graduate of that program. Well, it's fourth down and nine, and the Huskers are not showing anything, but let's go. So here's Sunberg, play action fake on the rollout, throwing over the middle, touchdown. And I mean to tell you, Brian Heimer paid the price after he crossed that end line. Tight end Brian Heimer was really drilled as he went into the end zone. Take a look at it. Sunberg rolls out. Heimer is wide open. Looks like he's going to run, then pulls up. Heimer is right there behind that official. Little lob looked like a little bit of a hole there, and Anthony Mays hit Heimer just as he caught the football. Holds on for the touchdown, a 12-yarder. Dale Klein on for the point after. He's three out of four today. This should make it 37. Zip. And it is up. And it is good. And keep in mind that the last 21 points have been scored here with less than six minutes gone in the fourth quarter. 11.06 to go. 37 to nothing. Dale Klein's kickoff is fielded down at the five by Michael Posey. And he takes a hard hit out there about the 19-yard line, and he's rolled right there. You know the tackle, number 83, Brad Tyrer, a def defensive end, sophomore from Kansas City Rockhurst. Posey had a blocker out in front of him and uh, slowed down a little bit, kind of indecisive as to which way to run. That allowed some other Nebraska players to get there and make the stop. Well, now Alan Hood is going to be coming back in at quarterback, so we have seen all we're going to see probably of Derek DeGenero unless Hood gets injured again. But there is Alan Hood coming back on the field. Hey, that's a tough situation for a freshman to come in and play against. Nebraska. What probably is it one of the top two or three rated teams in the country? That's just... Just not fair. Freshmen should be there, get their mistakes done, and before no crowd at all. Michael Posey is going to be the tailback, and he gets the call. Tries to skirt left end, and another fumble, I believe. And it's Nebraska football. Well, Nebraska will have the ball first and ten of the Iowa State 16 again. And off to Posey. Tucks it under, has the ball in the right hand. Let's see what happens. No, you saw the hand come through, pop the football loose. Nebraska has it at the 16. Turnovers in the ball game, six to one. Keep in mind that Iowa State hasn't had a turnover in the last two ball games. Here's another fumble, and Iowa State recovers again. And this time it's Anthony Mays. It was a pitch back to Keith Enzone Jones, and that ball hit him right on the numbers and bounced right to the turf. Game of Annie over. Anthony Mays and the defense going out. It's kind of like saying, don't do that to us, guys. We have to get it back. So they get it done in one play, and the Cyclones have it once again. Well, let's see if we got Hanson back there, tailback now. Keep in mind, he fumbled the first fumble of the ball game for Iowa State, and they replaced him with Posey. Yep, Hanson's back there. He who makes the last mistake watches, huh? Davis and Hanson in there at the running backs now, and Jeff Wadka goes in motion. The handoff goes to Richard Hanson. Tried to go to the middle, then skirts the left side, and a good effort by Richard Hanson. Crosses the 25, rolled out of bounds at about the 28. And it may be a first down. Good speed by Hanson, a good move by the small back. He'll cut to the left, jumps, goes left right there, and he'll outrun some big fellas. Gets the corner turn, picks up pretty good yardage. Be about a yard short of the first down. You may see some rain here before this ball game is over. Well, that sky doesn't look like rain to me. That looked more like snow. Probably not that cold, but it's getting that time of year. Here's the handoff to Tommy Davis. He tries right tackle, and he may have the first down. Everybody would like to see Iowa State put at least six and seven on the board today. The only real scoring opportunity they had was on a 54-yard field goal attempt by Mark Backroad. The distance was there with the win, but it was wide to the right. You know, it'd be interesting if somebody's got the stats, George, to see the deepest field penetration today by Iowa State. I don't think it's very deep. Here's Davis again. Might have been it on that field goal attempt. Out to the 30. 
37 yard line, I believe, is as far as they've gotten today. Chad Dapper makes the stop on Tommy Davis after a gain of about one and a half or two. Call it second eight, second or nine, whichever you wish. And we're down to nine, under 10 minutes to play in the ball game. 9.50. Ball is spotted at the ISU 31 yard line. Second down and eight. Next week, Kansas State, final home game at 84. Alan Hood has time going over the middle has Watkins. he bobbles the ball it's incomplete pass thrown just a little bit behind him he had to reach back for it and Wonka was really hit by Kevin Parsons a linebacker there sophomore from Springfield Glendale High School of Missouri defender right there with him I think you were right, George. The deepest penetration Iowa State had was one back road attempted at 54 yarder, and the ball was probably down around 37. Yeah, I think it was a 37. I think he kicked it from the 44. Usually they're seven yards back. Yep. Here's Hood. Play action fake, and he better hurry. Oh, he's going to be buried back at the 15, and a flag goes down, maybe against Iowa State. Jim Scow is the man that charged through there for the sack on Allen Hood. The flag looking at where it was thrown looked like it was probably going to be a holding call but they'll just they'll turn this one down and take the sack yep. Nebraska is going to decline it and Iowa State will be forced to punt the football away once again fourth down now coming up at about, about 19 deep man for Nebraska's Dubose and they're trying to find some guy from Nebraska that can field a punt without dropping it Nebraska almost had 12 men on the field. Running off there at the last minute was Neil Harris, a cornerback. DeBose is not especially deep. He is parked at it, Iowa State's own 45-yard line. And he is going to have to backpedal here. It takes a bounce right at the 45. Wants to take a Nebraska roll. And it's going to be down by Randy Richards. So Nebraska will take over first and 10 right at the Iowa State's 45-yard line, I believe. Jim Kreiner looking on. It was, well, the weather today and the sky overhead is sort of a reflection of the Cyclone performance today, rather dismal. The sun started to go under about the start of the fourth quarter. And that's when Nebraska started rolling. Here's Craig Sunberg. Wanted to have a little screen to the right side. It wasn't there. And then he throws it into a crowd. And he hits Porter, and he is nailed. I mean nailed by Jeff Braswell. Loss of on the play, actually. Loss of about two, and that may be the hit of the game for Jeff Braswell. Bet it is. Nebraska just uh, not content to play it out. They want some more points. And right here, the reception, and you'll see Braswell come in right there, put him right on his back. Also getting help there, I believe, from Randy Richards. Here's the option now by Sunberg. Gets a nice block. Finally kicks it out. Watch out. One man to beat. Touchdown, Nebraska. And this time it was Keith Enzone Jones. Take a look at Sunberg. Rolls out. Looks like it's all run. They come up. Make the commitment on him. The pitch goes outside. And there's nobody to cover Jones. He's down the sideline, has one man to beat, sets up the block with a little move right here, and goes back outside. The block is not really made, but it takes the defensive man out of position and goes into the end zone untouched, a 48-yarder. Eight minutes, 22 seconds left to play in the ball game, and Nebraska's not done yet, folks. Keep in mind, they've scored about four touchdowns in about the last six and a half minutes. 44 to nothing, Nebraska. Going into the fourth quarter, it was 16 to nothing, Nebraska. And since that time, uh, less than half the quarter has gone, and they've scored four touchdowns. Uh, DeBose on an 80-yard run, Turner on a 7-yard, 12-yard pass from Sunberg to Heimer, and Jones on a 48-yarder. Excellent play by Nebraska, and they've just, uh, they haven't eased up one bit. And there's still a month and a half left to go in the game. Yeah, eight minutes, 22 seconds. A lot can happen. The Cyclones uh, not going to have the win for the rest of the day. Well, about a third of the sixth largest crowd in Cyclone history has already departed for the parking lot. May help the traffic situation a little bit today. 
Only one stay in are the little red jackets from Nebraska. They'll stay around, but when they lose, they sure get out of here early, I'll tell you. A few years back, I looked around to find a Nebraska fan. They'd already packed their little vans and gone back home. Well, today, Nebraska is going to win its 26th straight Big 8 football game, and every week that they continue winning is another Big 8 record. Posey, he's going to let it fall into the end zone, untouched, out to the 20. Being ready for Kansas State. Here's the handoff to Hanson, tries to skirt outside, and a great defensive play there by Nebraska's Brad Tyrer. He's a defensive end. He got blocked inside, kicked off the block, and still went outside to make the tackle. Sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri. You look at Kansas City, or that uh, Nebraska's defensive ends, 210 and about 25, they are not very big, but they're very, very strong, and they're very, very quick, and they run really well. Well, the loss of two on the play brings up second down and 12. And again, Hanson gets the call. Gets just across the 20 to about the 21. Gets back to about the original line of scrimmage. And I think it's Mike Zirke, the defensive tackle from Pierce, Nebraska, that makes the tackle. Rushing today, look at this, 58 carries, 326 yards for Nebraska. Iowa State, 30 carries, 16 yards. Just about six yards a carry for Nebraska. It's team speed, that's a difference. Now, keep in mind that Nebraska came into the ball game allowing 86 yards rushing for opponents per ball game. Imagine that statistic going down even more. Now, here's the pitch to Hanson. No gain, loss of one. Ken Shedd wraps him up, the nose guard. Punting situation coming up. Penetration by the nose guard caused the play. Hanson tried to turn it inside. It was designed to go outside. And just no place to run. Iowa State coming on to punt the ball away again and DuBose to field it. And he hasn't fielded one yet, so they don't know if he'll drop it or not. <laughs> I would imagine right now that Iowa State just wants to keep that clock going and Say good riddance to a long afternoon. Oh, shank punt. Bounces out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. So Nebraska again knocking on the door. 6.27 to go in the ball game. Jeff, opportunity for the Cyclones to develop a little bit of confidence. Well, there's the handoff to Keith Jones, and he gets up across the 35 before Willie Everett puts the hit on him. And that'll be a gain of about four. Brings up second down at about six. Six minutes exactly left to play in the ball game. And we have a new quarterback in there, and we'll give you his information here in a moment. It's Cleet Blakeman. And this time Braswell with a good stop. Blakeman's a 6'185 185-pound freshman out of Norfolk, Nebraska. Well, that makes the first three quarterbacks from Nebraska. Travis Turner out of Scotts Bluff, Sunberg out of Lincoln. Now Blakeman out of Norfolk. Also have a, go ahead, he's a lot of homegrown boys. Have a new fullback in there also, Ken Kalen, who is a 210-pound sophomore from Westerville, Nebraska. And this time, a little counter play. Trying the left side. This time is Jim Thompson, the wing back. He gets down to about the 30. He'll be stopped short of the first down. Randy Richards, Willie Everett, Tony Tucker in there on the tackle. Pernell Gatson in the wing back. Number eight. You know, you can tell right now that Jim Carter's giving the defense uh, some substitution, some fresh breath in there because there was eight helmets, red helmets, when they started the ball game, and now there's only about three of them in there. Here's the option by Blakeman. And he is tripped down there, just barely tripped. By number 96, I believe, Perry Lowers. And Iowa State has finally contained the Huskers. And let's see now if Nebraska's going to punt it away, or try a field goal or what here. Oh, it's gone. It was fourth down. Cyclones have it. That was fourth down. So Iowa State holds. And they will take over now at their own 33-yard line. 
and see who the quarterback is. Is it De Janeiro or who? I think it's De Janeiro. Yep. Yeah. And he'll hand off to Posey. Posey gets a tough two and a half, three yards across the 35 up to about 36. Derek De Janeiro. And obviously they have to send in the plays from the bench because De Janeiro, only a freshman, does not know all the hand signals yet. So coming in with a play from the bench is tight end David Smolt. A lot of new faces in there now for Iowa State. Al Watson is in there at tailback, I believe. Tailback or fullback? Fullback. Here's the handoff to Watson. His first carry, tough two up the middle. Gets up to about the 39-yard line, so it will bring up about a third down and four situation, I believe. Watson the fullback and Posey uh, the tailback. Watson and Posey split setbacks in the backfield and the handoff goes to Watson and he bobbled the football momentarily and hesitated and he's driven back after about a three yard loss. Danny Noonan the defensive tackle wraps up Watson. So now we've got a fourth down and six coming up and again I believe it's Jim Thompson on to do the putting and we have a new deep back now for Nebraska. It's going to be Rob Schnitzler a split end from Battle Creek Nebraska. Every time that Iowa State punts a football, we see a new receiver back deep. Last time Thompson had to punt into the wind, he shanked it. But this one, oh, he gets a dandy off. Schnitzler calling for a fair catch and collects it at his own 26 and a half yard line. So we have two minutes, 50 seconds left to go in the ball game. 44 nothing Nebraska. Got a 38 yard kick by Jim Thompson against the wind. He hit that one real well. Cyclone's not blessed with consistency in that department. He hit some good ones and some bad ones. But he's still a youngster. So he's got some learning to do. Well, I'll tell you what the Nebraska coaches have just done. They've wrapped up their headphones and even left the booth. <laughs> Here's Jones. Tries the right side. Gets maybe a yard before Perry Lowers makes the tackle. Two minutes, 40 seconds left to play in the ball game, and it's all academic from here on out. Iowa State unable to put a point on the board thus far. It sort of tells it all right there, doesn't yep. it? Kind of that sad look. Is there a tomorrow? There will be. I think so. Nebraska sends motion to the right side, and Jones gets the pitch, and he is ridden out of bounds. By number 24, Tony Tucker. And there's Denny Goodrich, high atop that beautiful new Iowa State scoreboard. He's our end zone cameraman. And you can imagine today with that wind right at his back, a little cold. Of course, it's a little cold down there, too. He came down here at halftime. You know, that's, that's a long hike from up where he is. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to climb up there. Third down and five. The ball on the Husker 32 yard line. And he's one of our other cameramen we'll talk about in a moment. A little reverse here to Jones. He's got some running room and he has got a first down. Greg Leiter makes the tackle for Iowa State. And there's good old Steve, our sideline cameraman, giving us the thumbs up signal. That means he's still alive and kicking, I guess. In prayer. <laughs> In prayer. <laughs> Now Steve's going to turn the camera around and give us a shot up there. There's Bob Wilson up there right next to the press box giving us our 30-yard line shot on the north end of the field. Oops, busted play, flags all over the place, maybe procedure. Yep. Nebraska moving a little too quickly out there. This Jones really has the good moves for Nebraska. Uh -huh. Tailback Keith Jones, 180 pound freshman, but uh, have to build him up. You know, I question the durability. He's not real big. What I can't understand is year in and year out, Nebraska has such a stable of running backs. 
Now okay. keep in mind that when you go there as a freshman, you're not going to get to play much until you're a senior. You get a tradition going, and uh, you know you can almost guarantee a guy you're going to go to the Orange Bowl or something close to that every year, and it's a, an attractive thing. Plus, Nebraska has one university. They don't have to compete with anybody. Yep. Here's the keeper by Blakeman, and he's stacked up at about the 40-yard line. He'll be way short of the first down. But keep in mind, you know, with so many running backs and so much competition there, you would think some of these great running backs would go someplace where they could play as a freshman. Well, I don't think that's quite as important as playing in a solid, you know, a really solid program. Know that you're going to go to a bowl game and uh, you're going to have the pro people looking at you if you're interested in playing pro football. Well, I think the, the, you know, the healthy program, you, you get it going and it attracts other good players. Second down and 13. And a little counter play here to Pernell Gatson. And Jeff Braswell read that one out. Braswell has played another fine football game. Had an excellent performance today. I'm sure when the coaches look at some films, and they almost always do this, is that they'll find some things that he didn't do quite right. But watching it from, uh, from our standpoint, he has been involved in a lot of tackles. He wasn't earlier but has come on strong since about the middle of the second quarter. Well, we're down to 20 seconds, and this may be the last play of the ball game. Keith Jones gets the call, and he runs to the right side, and that may be all she wrote. And unfortunately, we may have a cyclone injured on the last play of the game, and it appears to be Tony Tucker. Nope, Gibson. 57 Dennis Gibson a red a red helmet man you don't want to get somebody hurt on the last play of a game when it's 44 to nothing now the clock's going to roll and that will do it so a long cold afternoon here at Cyclone Stadium and there is the unfortunate story the Cyclones felt they had a shot the way they had been playing the last couple of ball games played so very respectably against Oklahoma and then came back with a sterling performance against Missouri, which is a very potent offensive team. But today they met the king of the hill, probably the big eight champions, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and it was no match. Final score, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, 44, the Iowa State Cyclones, nothing. Give me a light.